We'll start this when I when I finish my knobbly bobbly, all right, Connor? Good things come to those who wait. Well, we're waiting. It's not time in the market. Honestly, it's time in the market. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right. Question one in the new studio. What did you think of the negative Channel 4 doc on crypto? Here's the thing with it is that originally it was called Bitcoin, a guide to cryptocurrency. And if you actually watch it back, you can tell it was called that because they, the whole way they, they've filmed it and the way they described it and everything was, it was a guide to cryptocurrency. They just changed the, uh, the Bitcoin title as the bubble burst just for clickbait. But when I watched it, it was, I mean, it was, it was cool. And the one thing that people don't realize is that I filmed, I filmed all day with them and they wanted me to say diamond hands, paper hands. And I didn't want to say it because I'm not into like keywords and all this stuff. I mean, I ended up saying it because they were like, you know, when it, and that was like the main thing, not the main thing, but filming all day. There's a few minutes in there that I was in there with Ade and they did include it. So, you know, that they storyline this whole hour. They storyline it, and the guy, you know, the guy who was like an ex trader or whatever, um, who like lived in London, um, and he was like, it was a, it's fool's gold. You can tell that, like, I felt a bit sorry for him because I know I'm pretty, I could bet money that they told him to say fool's gold because who says fool's gold? No one, unless you're like seventy, and like, you know, no one just says that, right? So. They told me to say the diamond hand paper hands thing. They told him to say the fool's gold thing. Um, but I thought it was pretty balanced. So, but also ultimately, I realized again how early we are. We're so early. Like I've been saying this for so long. And also, like I told Ade in the thing, I said, don't buy any altcoins. Don't, whatever you do. But they wanted to do it as part of the show, which is fine. You know, it's a shame they didn't put a lot more of the conversation we had in there because I wanted to get across that people don't understand money. And when you understand money, you'll realize Bitcoin is the future. Uh, but overall, I thought it was all right. Uh, how can I watch the documentary? Yeah, I think it's on all four. Just go to channel4.com and you'll find it. Can you do a video about Airstream slash Airbnb, costs involved and plans, etc.? I will. I always get asked that question. I'm waiting until all the Airbnbs are ready. So as soon as I do that, yes. Any industry slash business venture you'd like to explore but haven't yet? Uh, no. Coffee shops. I'd like, I'd love a coffee shop in Shoreditch. Like, I, I, I don't know why I just want to have a coffee shop. But I think for me now, the businesses that I want to like be involved in aren't really brands. I'm more, they're more like community-based, like small businesses. So I think that's the kind of stuff I want to do. Just bought a buy to let, not in a tourist area. Would you recommend Airbnb slash long term rent? Airbnb, 100%. Try it for three months, see how you get on, or maybe six months. Nothing to lose. And then if it works, it works. How much did the new place cost and what was the refurb cost? Too much and too much. <laughs> <laughs> Worth every penny though. I'm 23, I have a burning ambition to be successful slash start a business, yeah. any tips? Just keep learning and try everything. Just try and make money out of everything. Like everything and you know, something will hit. But you can't just do one thing anymore. That's what I've learned is that you just can't do one thing anymore. You've got to do lots of things. And normally the thing that you love doing doesn't make much money. It will get you by, but it won't make you wealthy. What inspired you to start doing podcasts? learning i'm obsessed with learning stuff so the idea of sitting down with, with cool people from really different industries uh, picking their brain was the was the big reason and it's worked out really well for me i've learned so much yeah some of the things that i've heard you know the stories and stuff are just crazy i never even knew that kind of stuff happened um and talking to different people with different backgrounds and you know net worths and all this kind of stuff has been interesting because you ultimately it's like i like talking to really old people older they are the more experience they have in life and that's why and that's why it's good to chat to older people because it, it's a bit like the podcast with Aman the other day you know he he said to me when he got here he was like this is what i want to do you know this is the kind of thing i want i want to live in a house in a cotswold one day and so, you know, I picked his brain for an hour and a half. He, he picked my brain. And ultimately, you're kind of, 
you're seeing yourself in a certain position, you're asking them lots of questions and you're kind of gauging how to get there and how it feels to be there. And so the podcast has been great for me because, you know, there's certain people that I like what they do and want to try stuff like that. You know, picking their brain has been, it's paid dividends. Biggest tip when renovating a house? Get someone else to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what car are you bring in on the last Mobile UK? Oh, good question. Uh, GT3, the Porsche GT3. 100%. I'm 21, just graduated uni. What steps to take to get first 10K a month? <laughs> such, a, such a funny question, because it'll take years to get 10 grand a month. It takes years, you know? So it, just keep keep working, keep grafting. It, it's, 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 yeah, it's like get having 10 grand a month is like, you know, if you can get that passive or whatever, where you've got assets that give you that, that's like fuck you money. If you can get to 10 grand a month, that's you, know, you ain't gonna worry about anything. So that won't happen overnight, you know? So just keep grafting, you'll figure it out. What are your Bitcoin and Ethereum predictions for this year and five years time? Uh, well, it's going up this week. So we'll see what happens. Um, but five years time, I definitely see Bitcoin past 100K and Ethereum past 10K. And if that's the case, I'll buy be gay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. Has your thoughts on Ethereum changed at all? In what way, I guess. But um, do you know what? The longer that you're in crypto, the more you lean towards Bitcoin. So when you first start out, you're like, oh, all these like shit coins and stuff like that. And then the more you learn about it, the more you go, well, Bitcoin is actually the only one that's legit. You know, that's the safest thing. So... Ethereum is amazing, it has utility, it's got people using it, like millions of people use it, which is good, but Bitcoin is the only one, really, that's the safe one. It's like Michael Saylor says. So let's just start at the beginning, if you don't mind, explaining what is it? <sighs> the protocol with Bitcoin has never changed. Ethereum changes every month, and that's the problem with it it's still changing constantly. So it's completely centralized where certain people, it's like fiat money, it's like our dollars, pounds, what? There's people that are changing the, 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 system, the code in it. So it's not fair. And Ethereum is still constantly changing. So it's too complicated. Whereas Bitcoin hasn't changed in 12 years, 13 years. So that's the difference. And when you, if you want safety, then Bitcoin's the only one. Um, but Ethereum does have utility. You know, Ethereum is the only one other than Bitcoin that has that network effect where constantly more people are using it and different things are being built on it. So Ethereum has that, whereas nothing else, in my opinion, does. No other altcoins do anything that's got any network effects or anything like that. So yeah, the longer you're in, involved in crypto, the more you start leaning and become a Bitcoin maxi, as they call it. I wouldn't say I'm that at the moment. I think Bitcoin maxis are like over 100 mil when they've got past 100 mil because they're like, why am I investing in other stuff? They're just leaving Bitcoin and take bits and bobs. If I ever become a Bitcoin maximalist, then you know I've got 100 mil. <laughs> Get laser dollar signs on my face, on my Twitter. <laughs> Do you regularly invest in the stock market? No, I don't invest in the stock market. No, it's not enough gains sound like a, some kind of steroid like gym guy don't I not enough gains <laughs> no I just, like I keep it simple I keep it simple like if I was to like invest in loads of stocks all the time I'd be constantly checking it I keep it simple Bitcoin Ethereum maybe the odd other thing whatever and then I do my businesses and that's it really keep it simple simple less stress zen that kind of thing. You seem to have built a great level of income with very few staff. Was that always the goal? Yeah, I think staff is an ego thing. Honestly, I think like when I was younger, I thought, oh, having like a sick office and like a lot of staff and all this. And then I, I ended up doing that. And I was like, oh man, I have to be in at eight every day. Cause they're always asking questions. I was like, I'm not into this. So I, I, from then on, I realized that I didn't want any staff whatsoever. The problem with staff as well is that they're lazy. You know, they, they phone in sick, they get, go and get smashed. All this kind of, like so many issues with staff. So 
I feel like most people have to go through it. But ultimately, if you can learn everything you need to learn, and I think most people should know with the internet, uh, like design, graphic design, all that, all that type of stuff. Um, if you can learn all that now and implement it, try not to have any staff whatsoever. Rent Airbnbs in London, right? Is there not a 90 nights limit? How do you factor this in? List it twice. Are you looking at hiring any interns? No, no interns. Uh, I know it's, it's like free stuff, but again, it's like you've got to manage them. And if I'm anything to go on when I was an intern, I didn't know my ass from my elbow, so I'd probably I'd have probably been a hindrance to most of those places when I was an intern. So you know, <laughs> unless they want to clean cars. But even then, they'll probably fuck it up, so. What ambitions do you have for yourself in five slash 10 years time? I don't have any ambitions. I just don't, like, I, I wanna build cool properties and, and rent them out. But cool properties that, you know, I design, build, and, you know, different locations. Because also, Costa Rica's a backup. If, if it all goes, if you see what's going on in Germany, like this red and green app thing that they're doing in China, I mean, if that starts to trickle out, it won't happen in the UK, I can't see it. We'll just literally burn everything down. In the back of my mind, there's like a percentage, like a 5% percentage that if they start, look at inflation, all these things, if they start changing the rules, I'm gone. Like, I'm out of here. Like, I'm taking my, what, what I've managed to earn in my life and I'm I'm going to a better country. I've, I don't, there's, like, I don't see the logic. I saw a video of... Uh, some politician that talk about how they get, they want to implement Bitcoin because if not, everyone will just leave. And it's true. Everyone I know with cash is gone, gone. Like literally people have gone. I'm like the last one to go, but I have this little dream of living in the Cotswolds and you know, I've got a big family and stuff, you know, but if rules change too much, then I'll be gone as well. It do you know how long it takes to get like set up in Dubai and living tax free? Three weeks. I could literally go to Dubai and in three weeks be a tax-free person and just spend, well, what, do what I want with my money. Like, it's so fast and easy now to live in a tax-free country like Dubai, but I wouldn't live there. But if I had to, because it saved me a fortune, then I would do it. Uh, where is the best place to buy cryptocurrency? Newbie here. I would say the safest places is like Binance or Coinbase. I would say the safest place are those two because they don't lend money out. Uh, so yeah, one of those two. I think Binance is number one now in the world. And I follow the CEO or the owner on Twitter. He's quite a cool dude. Yeah, it's legit. It's funny, Addy asked me that the other day. Is it safe on Coinbase? I was like, yeah, it's fine. Is your new house your forever home? Yes, this is my forever home. Yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this house, I can't believe I live in it. It's like insane. I can't, I, I, I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. But I, I can see this being my forever home. A few amends to do in the next couple of years, but uh, it's pretty legit. It's pretty good. Is Airbnb or Bitcoin slash Ethereum a better investment? Uh, I would say Bitcoin Ethereum first to like build up more money over time. And there's no work. You don't have to do any work. You haven't got to clean any rooms. Not like clean them, but you haven't got organized cleaners, all this kind of stuff. So. I, for me, if I was doing it, I'd save money, invest Bitcoin, Ethereum, 50-50, which is what I do. Keep investing in that, build capital, and then take a bit out to invest in other things like properties and Airbnb. That's what I do. Uh, I'm sure there's tons of other ways to make money, but um, to me, that's solid. And if you do that plan for like five or 10 years, you'll be, you'll be on a good level. Where would you live, not Europe? Ooh, good question. If it's for tax, Probably Dubai, uh, but it, I'd only live there for tax, and it's only five years, then you can come back. Um, but probably like Costa Rica, maybe, somewhere like that. I, I, I used to live in Hawaii, but the problem is you buy property there, you get taxed on it every year, so you, you don't own it. It's so awful. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'd live in Costa Rica for like a few years, but yeah, probably there. But I, I, the UK and the Cotswolds is like, for me the dream and my favorite place to live especially because i like driving there's so many good roads and sunday roast pubs and stuff like that it's just perfect so how's the costa rica project going 
Uh, it's it's about halfway, I'd say. So, yeah, it's it's coming along, but a bit slow. But it is what it is. At what stage in Bitcoin's life did you initially invest? At what stage in its life? Like it's like a person. <laughs> Early 2017. I think when I first saw it, it was about 13, 12, 1300 dollars. But I didn't get in that quick. Maybe at like 1500, I think, when I first bought some. Yeah. I remember when I was told about Ethereum, it was 38 dollars. 38. By the time I invested, it was about 80. So I did all right, but it was hard because like every day it was going up. I was trying to trying to get money into it, but it was like it's a slow process. But yeah, that was a funny one. Yeah, Bitcoin. Uh, my, but I've got friends who invested in Ethereum when it was eight dollars. Best location for my first Airbnb. Five-year goal is a small holding in Wales with several Airbnbs. Yeah, that sounds sick. As people are traveling in the UK now. Uh, I mean, everywhere. I think the key to Airbnb is get as many people in a, in a house as you can, because then you can charge more money. And groups like to stay in places because they save on hotel costs. So. If you can get like quite a lot of people into one house, you can charge more. You can also charge like, say you want to charge 200 quid a night. Once it hits four people, you can charge additional people. So if it's five people, when it comes out, it'd be 250 because you had 50. So there's like, just play with the settings. But Airbnb is good. Is it important to be passionate about your businesses if you just want to make lots of money? Yeah, if you're not passionate about your business, you're, you won't make any money because you, you'll just leave it. Like anything. 25k into Bitcoin and Ethereum or get your first house slash Airbnb property? Uh, 25k into Bitcoin and Ethereum or first Airbnb. Bitcoin and Ethereum. Any more questions? That's it. Done. Apparently, if you like the video, I never say this. I, I really have to tell people to like the video because I just don't do it. I bet I, we even forgot to take the photo the other day of the podcast. So hit the like on the video, please. And then press subscribe. You probably subscribed anyway, so it's pointless. But... Hit the like and I'll see you on the next video.